Poyo Poyo Sun 64 is a cute play on words. Sun is three in Japan, and the sun is that big eye burny thing in the sky, but also really well incorporated as a bit of style and theming for the game, and more crucially as an element of a new mechanic that makes the sun rules stand out as a wonderful twist on Poyo. Poyo Poyo Sun 64 is, if you can believe it, the N64 version of Poyo Poyo Sun, which has pretty minimal impact when compared to other versions of the game considering how simple this series is typically. The game is mostly Japanese exclusive and was on a majority of consoles that were around from 1996 to 1998, premiering in arcades in 1996, then jumping to the Saturn N64 and PlayStation in 1997, then PC and a stripped back version for the Game Boy Color a year after that, and would later be available as a downloadable title on the PS3, in Japan only, before finally making its international debut, sorta, on the Sega Genesis Mini 2 as Versus Poyo Poyo Sun, an all new port that is technically a Genesis game and only includes the multiplayer modes. Sega never fails to amaze me with the bizarre and random things they do. I've previously made videos about Poyo Poyo, as well as its sequel Sue, so I'm mostly going to focus on the sun rule, but rest assured the core gameplay of matching four colored blocks and watching chains collapse in order to flood your opponent's screen to trash is still intact. Poyo Poyo Sun has one incredible new feature that really does turn the game on its head. A, a parry. No, I... I'm not kidding. One of the main mechanics of Poyo Poyo is returning the junk Poyos to your opponent. Getting a combo sends some junk Poyos to your opponent, but if they get a combo before they drop, they return to you. The Sun Rule adds a new layer to this that increases the benefit and the risk. Returning junk Poyos now generates Sun Poyos on your own field, which in most regards are junk, and can fuck your own combos up. It seems like it's wholly negative at first, but the Suns hold a little secret. They're junk multipliers. They don't boost your score or your combo, but destroying them and incorporating them into your play sharply boosts the amount of junk you give to your opponent, and the deeper you are into your combos when you pop them, the better the boost. The game does seem to try to place them in places that are useful to you, but they, they will get in your way quite often. It's a mechanic that sharply increases how much you need to focus. Returning junk goes from something you do out of necessity to something your whole gameplay focuses on, and incorporating suns takes a lot of planning. You need to build in fail-safes to account for where the suns are going to land, and you need to be reactive and roll with the punches to make it work. I'm sure at high level you can predict sun placements, but I'm sure as hell not there. The mechanic is generally fantastic, and kind of has rocketed sun up to the top of the Poyo Poyo charts for me. Sun also contains several side modes, beyond the obvious story and multiplayer modes. An infinite mode that just goes and goes, but lacks an opponent or junk blocks, including Suns. It's a relaxing little mode, but does strip away the best additions to the game, and also you kind of lose that fun back and forth that makes Poyo Poyo special. There's also a puzzle mode. The game shows ghostly images of layouts it wants you to make, and while they get way, way too complex for me later, I think it's a pretty cool way to learn complex chain layouts, and even the few stages I took a shot at had a good balance of unique and interesting chain setups and challenge. All of this is definitely something for more dedicated Poyo players than me, I'm a Poyo casual. Poyo Poyo Sun doesn't look like an N64 game. Not always a bad thing. It's easily the most 2 d game on the console, certainly deriving from its roots in arcades, but also probably its inclusion on the more 2D-centric Sega Saturn. The game opens with a strong cutscene that sets the story into motion. Satan wants to get a tan to pick up chicks, so he uses magic to make the sun grow, which transforms the world into a steamy tropical resort, to the chagrin of everyone else. It's silly and cute, as are all this game's interim scenes between levels, which show characters interacting in various ways. Even though I can't tell what they're saying, the cutscenes are well directed enough to get the general idea and still have lots of fun visual gags and expressions. The characters are a bit too chunky for my liking, as was the style of Poyo Poyo for a long time, but I think the designs are strong and the characters are very cute, and even if it's not my favorite style, it's really strong and consistent. The music is another huge strength for this game. The tropical theming in this game is mostly background fluff, beyond a few characters wearing swimsuits and other summer wear, unless you count the music. The soundtrack exudes summer, percussion heavy but relaxed. The music gives the same kind of vibes you get from Mario Sunshine music. It's, it's daiquiri music. Whether that's in-game or just in the menus, although it's notably more defined in the non-gameplay segments where the music doesn't need to be as up-tempo as it does in the gameplay. Regardless, it's all fantastic and suits the theming of the game perfectly. This is a short video, but Poyo Poyo Sun 64 is fantastic. One simple mechanical addition adds so much to the complexity and depth, it's kinda crazy. 
It's definitely not a good first Poyo Poyo game. The Sun's had a lot to keep track of and think about, on top of attempting to develop chains and reflect junk, and requires a lot more improv skills too. But it's a solid advanced version of the traditional Poyo that doesn't go completely off the rails with some wacky gimmick or detract from the basic gameplay. It really only adds. If you already like Poyo, you're gonna love Sun. If you don't already like Poyo, I mean play Sue or Tetris, then you'll love Sun. It's it's just a fun game, it's that simple.